do I do every day, Mum? What do I do? Get up, catch the bus, go to work, come back home, eat chips and go to bed. Is that it? It's what the rest of us do. But I can't. Why? Because you're better than I... No, I didn't mean that! But it was. It was a better life. And I, I don't mean all the travelling and... Seeing aliens and spaceships and things, that don't matter. The doctor showed me a better way of living your life. You know he showed you too. That you don't just give up. You don't just let things happen. You make a stand. You say no. You have the guts to do what's right when everyone else just runs away. This is today's flat earth. The fact that we live in the cutting edge of human evolution. The cutting edge of uh, how far humanity has come. Turning a planet of enormous beauty into a shite hole ain't the cutting edge of human evolution. As Michael Elner said, just look at us. Everything is backwards. Everything is upside down. Doctors destroy health. Lawyers destroy justice. Universities destroy knowledge. Governments destroy freedom. The major media destroys information. And religions destroy spirituality. I think there's more to know here. We always kill the guys who try and help us. Isn't that strange? We let the little demons run amok. Always. John Lennon, murdered. John Kennedy, murdered. Martin Luther King, murdered. Gandhi, murdered. Reagan, wounded. Yeah. Bad fucking choice. Um, you find that people that are in positions of apparent power, like prime ministers and presidents, are actually um, puppets of the real power which doesn't put itself on public display. Why would it? I mean, does anyone really think that George W. Bush is running America? Uh, eh, he probably couldn't tie his shoelaces, never mind run a country. I have this feeling, man, because you know there's a handful of people actually run everything. That's true. It's provable. It's not a fuck. I'm not a conspiracy nut. It's provable. Handful, very small elite run and own these corporations, which include the mainstream media. I have this feeling who's ever elected president, like Clinton was, no matter what your promises you promise on the campaign trail, blah, blah, blah. When you win, you go into this smoky room with the 12 industrialist, capitalist scumfucks who got you in there. And you're in this smoky room and this little uh, uh, film uh, screen comes down. And a big guy in a cigar, roll the film. And it's a shot of a Kennedy assassination from an angle you've never seen before. <laughs> It looks suspiciously off uh, the grassy knoll. And in the film, the screen goes up and the lights come up and they go to the new president. Any questions? Uh, just what my agenda is. First we bomb Baghdad. You got it. What I am is frustrated at watching uh, Orwell's 1984 unfold in front of our eyes by the day while people focus on who shot Phil Mitchell. That, that, is, that is frustrating because my children and your children, thank you, are gonna have to live, indeed, in the time scale, so are we, because we're living in it now, when the most basics of freedoms are being taken away. The average man and woman is in a trance. They get home from work, they don't even talk to their children. They turn the television on and they let those corporate messages set the agenda in their lives. All you ever hear about in this country is our differences. That's all the media and the politicians are ever talking about, the things that separate us, things that make us different from one another. That's the way the ruling class operates in any society. They try to divide the rest of the people. They keep the lower and the middle classes fighting with each other so that they, the rich, can run off with all the fucking money. Fairly simple thing happens to work. 
You know, anything different, that's what they're going to talk about. Race, religion, ethnic and national background, jobs, income, education, social status, sexuality. Anything they can do, keep us fighting with each other so that they can keep going to the bank. Divide and conquer is the motto. And as long as people continue to see themselves as separate from everything else, they lend themselves to being completely enslaved. We've all seen vast herds or flocks of sheep controlled by a sheepdog and, and an authority figure called a shepherd. You imagine if just a significant number, not even half, of those sheep said, we're not going to uh, succumb to fear of, uh, of the sheepdog, um, and we are going to go our own way. And those sheep start going in their own way, they start expressing their uniqueness, and they stop acquiescing with the authority figure and succumbing to fear. Where's the power of the shepherd now? Where's the power of the sheepdog now? It, they have no power except in um, acquiescence by the mass of the sheep to the perceived power that they have. We need, we need to start seeing humanity in these terms very, very quickly. I've seen these ants do great things. And year after year, they somehow managed to pick food for themselves and you. So who is the weaker species? Ants don't serve grasshoppers. It's you who need us. You know when you, you go through all these different levels of how, how we are attacked mentally, emotionally and physically to suppress us and to hold us in, this, in the box, in the bubble, that tells us something about us, people, what people don't realize. Oh, it's negative. No, no, it's not negative. It's extremely positive if you want to use those terms because it's telling us who we really are. The level of suppression on multi-levels, in multi-ways, that they've had to go to and continue to go to, to hold us in servitude, shows that the, the potential and, of, of, of genius and magnificence that we really are. And that's our natural state. This is the difference between the power of the, our Creator and anything else, particularly evil. That you can go into a pitch black room full of evil, full of darkness, and light a little candle, and instantly that darkness flees. But you can't do the opposite. You can't go into a well lit room full of truth and wisdom and righteousness, and joy and health, and harmony with the universal power. You can't take up any amount of darkness and go into that well-lit room and have any effect whatsoever. That is the metaphor which I frequently think of when I think that I'm not empowered. It is the greatest lesson for me and I think for everybody else to know that we're on the winning side and that we're winning. Today, a young man on acid Realize that all matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration. That we are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There is no such thing as death. Life is only a dream. And we are the imagination of ourselves. Here's Tom with the weather.